Hey coders, Darren here, and I'm going to be finally continuing the Mechanim uh, tutorial series for Unity 3D. I know it's been about a week since I've uh, gotten into this, but I have been a little bit busy. But uh, this is a really requested topic, so I've come back to add the Mechanim uh, character animation tutorial. And we're going to be using Mixamo to do this. Now Mixamo, if you don't know, is a great tool for taking some free assets for characters and free animations that are actually really high quality, triple A quality. Uh, and we can take those for free and bring them into our Unity project and uh, get a quick prototype going. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is first, let's go ahead and log in. So create an account if you don't have one already, I'm going to put my cred credentials in right now. Um, and what we're going to be doing is getting a simple uh, character animating, basically just running and strafing back and forth uh, we're going to be using the eight directional character system from a previous tutorial. So what we want to do is just find a simple uh, simple uh, locomotion pack. So what I did was I just clicked store there. And then we have this page come up that gives us a lot of sort of prefabs for different characters and different animations. So here we have the pro magic pack and the light magic pack. These will give us actual magic animations. So whether it's doing something with their hands and shooting fireballs, those animations are included in these. Pro rifle pack will give you animations such as running and shooting or crouching with a rifle in your hand. Uh, and so a lot of these sort of follow suit and you get really great animations with these. Now in this tutorial, we're just going to be doing an introduction to Mixamo. So what I want to do is go with a basic locomotion pack. Now what we can do is click the female locomotion pack. I already have, uh, I've done this several times now to prepare for this tutorial. Uh, but so I already know the character I want to use, but you can feel free to choose a different character than mine. And you can still follow along with the tutorial. Now what I have here is a character selected. I can go ahead and change the character. So if you want to use a different character, you can click on Mixamo characters here. And then you can just sort of scroll through until you find a character that you want to use if you want to follow along. And they have, it looks like four pages here. So I'm using Eve right here in the top right. And what we want to do to set Eve up is give her a few animations. So I'm going to click customize pack right here. And uh, what we can see here is we have a few options to uh, manipulate this uh, strafe animation. Now, the first thing I want to do is click this checkbox in place. Now, if I uncheck that, we can see the animation is actually moving the position of Eve. And that's not something we want in Unity. In Unity, we're going to be, we're going to be modifying the position of Eve uh, through code, through script, through character controller. So we don't want the animation to be moving her position. So what we do is we check in place and now we have this nice animation running in place uh, and it's going to look natural because we're actually going to be moving her position uh, along the direction that she's facing. Now we can uh, change other settings on these sliders such as overdrive and that's going to slow down or speed up the animation. Uh, totally up to you if you want to modify these things. I'm going to leave it right back at 50. Arm space is another thing that we can modify. So we can bring her arm space really close in to her sides. And you can get some really silly looking things coming out of this for sure. So that's sort of giving you an introduction to the flexibility of this uh, incredible resource. We can even trim this so that we get uh, different frames in our animation. I'm going to leave it at the default because I don't want to mess too much with that. Uh, but we're going to go through these animations and make sure that they're all in place. If they're moving, we want to make sure they're in place. Now the running one should be in place. The jump isn't uh, going to be modified. They don't even give us the option there. Obviously idle is already in place, so we don't have a checkbox for that. Now left walk straight, uh, strafe. Also right strafe walk and walking. Now in this tutorial, we're only actually going to be uh, working with probably left and right strafe, and we'll be working with uh, run, and that might be it. So running and left and right strafe, and also idle, of course. Uh, we're not going to get into jumping. Uh, this is just an introduction, and we may go deeper into this character a little bit later in future tutorials. Now, one thing I do want to do is see if I can rename these. I'm not sure if I actually can either. Uh, when these get brought into Unity, 
they're not actually going to have the name. So this animation won't actually be called left strafe. They're all going to be labeled as Mixamo.com. I'm still trying to figure out why that is. And if some of you know, definitely leave comments in the comment section. But otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and click view and download. Now, you might run into some problems with loading. Uh, you might get stuck in some endless loading loops uh, with certain browsers. I found that using uh, Mozilla Firefox for Windows works well. And I think Safari for Mac OS works well. Uh, Chrome tends to have problems, at least for me, and you might uh, have the same issues as well. So I recommend using Firefox, uh, trying that out. But what you'll do is click Q Download. We can change the format to FBX for Unity. Everything else can stay default, and we click Q Download. Then this will show up as processing, and hopefully if you don't run into an endless loading loop, then you will eventually be able to actually download that package. Now, once you download the package, you should have the in progress folder in your downloads, unless you renamed it in the Mixamo web browser. Now we're just going to extract all right into our downloads folder. And I'm actually going to rename this to Mixamo. This is going to be my Mixamo folder in Unity. And then what I'm going to do is just drag that into my assets folder, just like this. That's going to load a little bit. Then we can take a closer look at exactly what it is that we got from that. So you'll probably get this message showing up about a normal map. You can just click fix now and that'll get rid of that error. I mean, it really wasn't an error, mostly just a warning, but regardless, we got rid of that. So let's open up the Mixamo folder and then we see all of these FBX format file types uh, for each of our animations. So you might think this is like a little bit cluttered and it is, uh, but essentially what we have is our main character. This is what we're actually going to be dragging into our scene. And then we have all of the animations right here. So if we open these up, you can see, as I was saying, we have Mixamo.com and all of the animations are called that. So I'll do my best throughout this tutorial to clarify exactly which animations I'm using. Uh, but if you click on the animation, it will highlight the FBX that you're using. So you can tell when we click Mixamo.com here, it will highlight left strafe in place. So again, I'll do my best to make sure I'm clarifying that as I talk about these animations. So we wanna make sure that all of these animations uh, for lack of better term, are pointing to the correct avatar. If you open these up, each one of them have an avatar. So jump avatar, idle avatar. Now the animator, uh, the the prefab. I'm sorry, the prefab that we're going to be using for Eve is this one, and we're going to be using the Eve avatar. We want to use one avatar. We're going to have one centralized avatar for all of our animations to point at. So what I want to do first of all, before I get ahead of myself, I want to select all of these FBX file. Uh, types. I want to click on rig and I want to make sure they're all humanoid and then I'll just click apply. So once that finishes processing, uh, we're going to set it up in such a way that all of the animations are pointing to the same avatar. Now what I'm going to do is deselect Eve and I'm going to open up. So I'm going to open up Eve right here so I have access to her to her avatar. And then while I'm selected on all of the animation FBXs, I'm going to change the avatar definition from create from this model to copy from other avatar. Now we get this source avatar field showing up that's empty. And all we're going to do is drag this avatar into the, the source uh, field for each one of these. And then I'll click apply. And then at this point, we should be set up and ready to go. We shouldn't have to do much else. Now when I click Eve, uh, next to the configure button, we have this check mark indicating that we are ready to start working with these animations. Now, first, before we go forward, make sure that you have a test scene set up uh, so that we can make sure we're saving our work. Otherwise, let's go ahead and add a plane to our scene. It looks like my lighting is a little bit messed up, so I'm going to click lighting and click generate lighting. Sometimes that can happen. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that this plane is sizable so we have enough room to run around. I think I'm actually going to add some cubes as well so we have sort of uh, reference points when we're actually running around. And really quickly, just bear with me, I'm going to uh, sort of set up this scene a little bit. I'm going to add, let's see, yeah, we do have shadows there. So I'm going to add some color here. I'm just going to create a quick material for this cube just so I can give it a color other than white. I think I'll create another material for the ground as well. So we'll also have a ground material. Okay, and the ground, we'll just say is some, uh, I, I tend to use 
dark colors for the ground. I think it looks a little bit better. We can actually leave the cube white if we want, but I already created that material, so I'll just add that red color. Okay, now what we want to do is go into Mixamo and take this Eve character, which is ready to go, and just drag her into the scene. So this is going to be our character that we're going to be running around with and animating. And actually, if we press play now, she should be staying in T-Pose, which is great. Uh, now what we want to do is go ahead and create an animator controller for her. Over here we can see that it already has an animator component on it. We just need a driver controller to manage all of the animations. So I'm going to create an animator controller. I'm going to call this Eve animator controller. And I'll just drag that on to this component field. Okay, now whenever I click play, we are going to see Unity try to manage these animations. Uh, basically, this is what's going to happen if we don't actually have any animations in our animator controller. Now, if I click animator, we can see we don't have any states uh, being active. So this is Unity making its attempt to do something with the fact that it has an animator controller with no animations. Uh, but this does uh, mean, this is a good sign because it does show that our muscles uh, for our rig are actually showing up or actually working properly. But it, we, th this obviously isn't the behavior that we want, right? Uh, let's start off easy. Let's just start with an idle animation. Now, if you haven't seen the previous tutorials, go ahead and check those out. Uh, I'm not just going to be creating states here. I'm going to actually add a blend tree. Now, blend trees are a way of merging states, animation states, so that we can sort of blend between two different animations. So imagine... Uh, I'm strafing and I'm also going forward. We might expect our animation to sort of compensate for those two animations and give us something that makes us look like we're running diagonally, uh, which is what we would, we would typically want, especially in an eight directional character system, which is what we're going to be using for this tutorial. So uh, what I'm going to do is go to create state and say from new blend tree. Now we can just double click this blend tree and go into the blend tree just like this. And to start off simple, all I want to do is add the idle animation. So I'm going to right click on blend tree and click add motion. Now over here in our inspector, we can see that we have a motion added. Uh, our blend type is 1D, which is fine for now since all we're doing is idling. Now let's go ahead and add this motion. So I'm going to open up idle over here and drag that animation clip over to the motion. And we can see that that's actually showing up over here now in our blend tree so that we actually have a connection established from our blend tree to our animation. Now remember I said for some reason all of these are called Mixamo.com. I will work on that and try to find a solution and if either, if any of you uh, know why that's happening let us know in the comments or hop on our discord channel and let us know what's going on there. Okay now if I press play we should see the idle animation and let's go ahead and take a look at that and you can actually even see her breathing so we do have confirmation that that animation is going through. Uh, it doesn't look like it's looping because she just stopped breathing. So let's go ahead and click on the idle. And we can click on this idle prefab and click on animations. And uh, Mixamo gives us some settings here to uh, modify the animation a little bit. For idle, we just want to make sure this is looping, right? So I'll go ahead and apply that. I'll click play again. And she should keep breathing. She shouldn't stop breathing. And that's going to indicate that our looping is actually working there. So I'll let that run for just a second. And it looks like she just looped right there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But now what we want to do is uh, get her running around, right? So we're, we need to be working with the forward, the running anim animation. So running in place. Also strafing in place. So that's going to be working with left strafe in place and right strafe in place. Before I do that, I want to make sure I bring in my camera and uh, character controllers. And I'm going to be bringing these in from a previous tutorial called the A Directional Character System. Uh, now it's worth noting that our patrons do get our source code and our projects for free um, for contributing to Renaissance Coders. And if you want this source code, uh, then go ahead and check out our Patreon. Uh, you can also get some other great rewards uh, for doing that. But we are going to be using those. And if you want to check out the uh, tutorial for the eight directional character system, I will provide a link to that. Let's go ahead and add our Mario controller 
onto Eve. Okay, so we're all set up there. I'm going to reduce the speed, the velocity of this to two. And I'm going to set the Y to five. Uh, this is for the camera settings. And the Z to, let's just say um, the Z is negative four. And let's say the, the Y is a little bit closer. We wanna have a little bit of a closer look to our character. Let's press play. Uh, actually, I do need to drag Eve into the target component there. Okay, now over here in our game view, we have a good look. Now I do have this jitter and I want to address that right now. Let's go into our camera controller. This jitter happens sometimes whenever the character controller, or I'm sorry, whenever the camera controller is in a uh, late update. But I actually have the camera controller in fixed update. So if I change that to late update, I wonder if that's actually going to fix that jitter that we just saw. Yeah, that's so weird. So it's actually fixed. So this is a weird issue, and I'm actually going to uh, I'm, I'm going to extend this problem to you coders. If you're running into this issue, uh, let me know because sometimes it works for me in fixed update, and sometimes it works in late update. Uh, so if you have this camera jitter and you know what the issue is, let me know. I th I honestly think it's just an issue with Unity. Uh, because again, sometimes fixed update works and sometimes late update works. And you guys just saw um, fixed update there wasn't working and I switched it to late update and that did work. Now, uh, to add to that, uh, Unity does say that late update should work. So if late update is the one that works now, I'm totally fine with that. Okay, so we have our camera and character controller set up. Let's go back to our animations and see what's going on there. What we need to do is add the running and the strafing animations. So let's get running forward and running backwards first. And that's going to be sort of an introduction to blend trees for us. So let's add a new motion here. So this motion is going to be um, this motion is going to be running in place. So let's go to Mixamo and look for running in place. And we're just going to drag Mixamo onto this. And we also want one for running backwards. Now we can see here, uh, we're still in 1D. Now we are gonna want to move to 2D because that's going to give us a blend on two axis points um, for the horizontal A and D keys and the vertical W and S keys. Uh, if we look at this blend, we can see if we modify this blend, then we go, um, just look at the color. So if we're right here at 0.5, those are both the same color. That's indicating to us that both of those animations are being perfectly blended. Okay, now what I wanna do is change this blend type to simple 2D directional. And I need to add a parameter. So first, we're gonna have a blend X, and then we'll also have a blend Y. So let's add this blend Y. And these are going to be directly mapped to our character inputs. So we have character inputs for horizontal movement, and vertical movement. So horizontal is going to be mapped to blend X, vertical is going to be mapped to blend Y. Now I need to go in here to my inspector and add this blend Y. And if we look over here in our blend tree now, we have two blend uh, sliders, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now I need to go down here. This, so this mixamo.com is my idle. This mixamo.com is my running in place. We can see that uh, highlight in the uh, asset panel. Now if we're running forward, then our pause Y should be one. So that is a vertical input of one, which is if we're pressing W. Now we also want to be running that animation when we're pressing S, because when we press S, we're actually running back towards the camera. Let me press play to demonstrate that really quickly. So if I'm pressing forward, I just go forward. If I'm pressing S, I should be turned around coming back. So we also want the same running animation, but we, we want that to be working whenever we're also uh, at negative one on the pause Y here. So what I want to do is set, set one here, and then I want to add a new motion. So add new motion, and this motion is going to be the same mixamo.com, but this one is going to be negative one. Okay, now if I press play, we should see something start to happen. Okay, still no, still no animation. Um, so the reason we don't have any animation yet is because we're not actually modifying the blend Y. So I actually need to be modifying this blend Y from a script. 
Uh, we will get to that actually. So let's go ahead and go to our Mario controller. Okay, and the first thing we want, regardless of what uh, character controller you're using, we want a reference to our animator. So I will, not animation, but animator. That's going to be our animator controller. So animator anim, and in start, we can initialize this by calling get component. So anim equals get component animator. Just like that. Now we're already modifying the input.x and input.y. So what I want to do is simply say anim.setfloat blend x, and that's going to be equal to input.x, and anim.setfloat blend y, input.y. Now, if you're confused about what we're doing here, I recommend checking out some of the tutorials earlier in the series. We sort of go through this and what this actually does. In those tutorials, but we're just sending the we're we're just setting the blend x and blend y parameters that we just created in the animator, and we're mapping that directly to input.x and input.y. Um, now we do want interpolated values in this case. In other words, we want values from negative one to one, um, where we aren't just going in discrete steps. So we will have values in between negative one and zero, and in between zero and one. So by removing get axis raw and replacing that with get axis, we get those interpolated values. Now let's go back to Unity and see how those are actually mapping to these sliders. So whenever I actually play the game, let's go ahead and watch these sliders. So when I press forward, we can actually see this blend.y slider moving. Okay, so it looks like for some reason, because we are trying to map 2D coordinates to uh, simply the, the, the only the Y blend, uh, the animation actually isn't playing. So this is just an example of some weird stuff that we can run into with Mechanim. What I'm going to do is sort of fill this out. So let's go ahead and just add the motion fields for the strafe and see if that fixes things. So I'm going to add two new motion fields. And the first motion field actually auto set. So uh, this first motion field, we want uh, the X blend to be negative one. That's going to represent uh, the left strafe. Then we want a, a blend X of positive one with a blend Y of zero, and that's going to represent our right strafe. So all I need to do is drag these uh, onto, all I need to do is drag these onto our animation clips. So let's take our left, and that's going to go on negative one, and we'll take our right and place that on the positive one. Uh, now when I move the blend X, we can see these circles expanding and shrinking. That represents the actual blend. How much of that animation is actually being uh, shared at that moment? Uh, if we go up, we can see we have three being shared here, and that's going to give us more of our diagonal movement. Uh, when we get further away, we are totally separated from the idle animation. So I'm looking at this uh, little model down here in the inspector. So let's go ahead and press play and see if that fixed things for us. Okay. So it actually did, and that's really strange. I, I think that's just one of those things that you run into with uh, Mechanim. And now I'm actually not able to, it looks like I can't even get my strafe animation to work correctly now. Uh, this, again, these are just issues that we run into. So what I wanna do is set some of the settings in the Mechanim animation. So what we're going to do is go through these animations and just set some default settings. These are settings that I always use. So what I'm going to do is set root transform rotation and both of the root transform positions to bake and to pose. Uh, I do that with all of these. Now, if you're wondering what this is, it just means that the, the position isn't going to be modified by the animation. Um, for instance, if we have the jump animation, we will want to uncheck this because we will want the Y position to be modified by the animation. But again, since we're baking it into pose, uh, the animation is not going to affect the position or the rotation of our actual transform on our character. So I'm going to apply this to left strafe in place. And of course we want loop time on that. And then I'll do that on right strafe in place. And we can see here over on the green, that's just saying that the loop matches, which is great. Sometimes you'll see that the loop doesn't match if we bake into pose, but on all of these, it's looking pretty good. So we should get a decent looking animation uh, as the outcome of this. 
So I'll go ahead and press play. Okay, we can run forward. It looks like that loop is going and it's working. I'll turn around and we're running back towards me. Now the magic of the blend tree comes in whenever we're actually pressing uh, two keys at the same time. So if I press forward and then press A, we're going in this diagonal. And there's just this really smooth transition. There's no real skipping uh, between these animations as I'm running around. That's really what you want. Now with this particular controller going between uh, the two extremes of A and D uh, shows to be a little bit troublesome for this animation. So there's a little bit of a pause there as she turns around and goes back to her animation. Uh, but this is a basic intro tutorial, so I think this is about as deep as I'm going to go into it. And in the next tutorials, we may add some other things, such as the turning animation, the jumping. Let me know what you guys want to see. If, if, you, want to, if you want to you know, move on from the Mixomo animations uh, into something else, let me know. Uh, it's all about what you guys want. And if you like the video, then go ahead and drop a like. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. I mean, we're putting out some great content for you guys. We are working our butts off day in and day out. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, jump in our Discord chat, and ask us your questions there. That's a great platform to communicate with us. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and have a great day.